welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna do a little tag video because we love a good tag. So I wanted to do the palette tag. I've seen quite a few of my favorite YouTubers do this. Um, I've seen Kelly Gooch do this, Jessica Braun, um, Hannah at Smoky Glow. If you can hear a lawnmower in the background, it's my husband mowing the lawn. So I'm gonna probably put a little bit of background music in to hopefully cover that up, but it is what it is. We're filming when we can. So there's a few questions. The original creators of this tag are Samantha March and Allie Glines. I will link their videos in the description box down below, and I will also list all of the questions in the description box down below if you feel like you wanna answer some of these questions. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments. If you have a YouTube channel, I'd love to see you do this video. I'm tagging you. So if you do, tag me, um, tag me on Instagram, send me a DM, something like that. I'd love to see it. Um, so let's just dive into the questions. So the first question is, show your newest palette. So I actually have two that I got at the same time. I got the Hello Charmer Boxy Charm palette in, I think it came in the February box. I actually haven't gotten a palette from Boxy Charm since then. I've been opting more for skincare when I have the option, but I got this palette in a boxy charm. It actually arrived while I was in Cuba. I do really like it. It's in my current shop, my stash. I've been enjoying it a lot. And the other palette that I got at the same time is the Anastasia Riviera palette. Um, so one of my best friends, Kate, bought this for me at Marshall's. Marshall's? I think it was Marshall's. She'll correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but she picked this up for me. It was so sweet. So actually when we went to Cuba together, um, when I arrived at her place in Halifax, uh, she had this there for me. So I ended up bringing it with me to Cuba, even though I hadn't planned on bringing it with me to Cuba. I love this. It's also in my Shop My Stash right now. So I've really been enjoying it. I've been doing lots of fun, colorful looks, especially now at work where I'm wearing a mask some of the time. Um, it's been really fun to just play around with color. So I've really been enjoying that a lot. So those are my two newest palettes. The next question is show your oldest palette. So I have two that are embarrassingly old. So I bought these way back in the day at a trade show when I first started doing aesthetics. Um, and they look like this. They're these huge 88 color palettes. This is one and this is the other one. So I keep these more for like sentimental reasons, but I do love having these huge palettes sort of on hand if ever I was doing makeup for like a fitness competition, if we ever have those again. Um, sometimes people like to like exactly match the color of their suit. So it is nice having these big palettes, but to be very truthful, I can't remember the last time I used them. So I really just keep them more for like <laughs> nostalgia's sake, I guess. Um, but they are very old and I do still own them. I used to have, I don't know, maybe six of them, and these are the two that I kept when I did my huge declutter a couple of years ago with my friend Kate. Um, I'll link that in the description box down below. It's really old, but we had a ton of fun filming it. So we, I did keep these, but as I said, I really don't use them very often. The next question is, show your most expensive palette. So I, because I do BoxyCharm, a lot of my palettes, even though they might have a higher dollar value, I didn't actually buy them for that price, if that makes sense. Um, so the palette that I have that I personally spent the most money on was the Norvina palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills. I bought this for myself as a birthday present last year. I like oohed and odd over it for like a year and a half before I finally bought it. Um, so this is the one that I would have spent the most money on. So in Canada, the Anastasia palettes go for $55 at Sephora plus tax. So I spent, you know, a little over $60 on this one palette. So that's probably my highest ticket item in terms of what I bought it for. And again, I have other palettes that I was gifted or I got through BoxyCharm, but as far as me spending my own dollars, this would be the most expensive one that I have purchased. Next is show your most affordable palette. So this is the e.l.f. Mad for Matte eyeshadow palette in Nude Mood. And it looks like this. I use it all the time. Um, this was actually given to me by one of my friends. She bought it, hated it. I love it. <laughs> 
think it's a great little palette. It goes for about $10, very affordable. I really don't use any of these darker colors. I use these lighter ones mostly as transition colors. So I do love this palette. It's only $10, it's very, very affordable. The next question is show your everyday palette. So this was a little bit challenging for me because I really use different palettes all the time. I do shop my stash. So I always have a couple of palettes that I'm working from more for a couple months at a time, but I do often use a different palette every day. So it's hard for me to pick an everyday palette, but in terms of like an everyday sort of regular look, I had to go with my I opened it up. I had to go with my Violet Voss Holy Grail palette. This palette is just so, it is the perfect everyday palette. You can create any look from just super natural no makeup makeup to a more natural smoky eye. The colors are very neutral. There are some warm tones in here and some more cool tones, but in general I get a very everyday look when I use this palette. And I also use this one a lot for bridal makeup, for prom. It's just a very nice like soft palette that just works really well. I can always count on it. I know what kind of a look I'm going to get when I pull this palette out. So I thought this was sort of the best option in terms of choosing an everyday palette, even though I don't ever use the same palette every day. <laughs> The next question is show your most colorful palette. So of course I have those 88 color palettes that I just showed you as my oldest palettes. Those are certainly my most colorful in terms of having the biggest variety of different colors. However, when I think of a very colorful palette in my collection, I do automatically think of the Laura Lee Los Angeles Party Animal palette. This really says rainbow to me. It's very vibrant. There's nothing neutral in there. It is like a rainbow palette. So this was the one that sort of came to mind when I thought about that question. I don't use it very often, but I just think everybody needs to have a little rainbow palette in their collection. The next question is show your smallest palette. So I have this little baby Urban Decay palette and this is called Beauty with an Edge. I think this was like a Christmas special. I do have other four pan palettes in my collection, but in terms of the size of the pans, this is definitely the smallest. They're just little weensy baby eyeshadows. So this is very small. As you can see, I've hit pan on a couple of the colors. Um, I have resisted decluttering this so many times. I don't know why. I just think this color called derailed is so unique. It's like a metallic taupe. It's so different and pretty. So this is definitely the smallest palette. Um, as far as like grams of eyeshadow, if that makes sense. The pans are really small. There's only four colors. Um, it doesn't take up a ton of room in my collection. It would take up even less if there wasn't a spot for, I think there was a little mascara in there. I can't remember, it's been so long. Anyways, this is my smallest palette in my collection. The next question is show your biggest palette. So. Again, I have those 88 color palettes that have the most color in them. I have some big color pop palettes. That Holy Grail palette is pretty big, but in terms of a footprint, because I stack my palettes like this on the shelf down here that you can't see, um, in terms of footprint, the Storybook Cosmetics Little Briar Rose palette definitely has the biggest footprint. Because I stack them like this, this one takes up the same space as like three palettes of like a normal size. Cause even the ones that are big this way are still thin this way. So this one's definitely like the bulkiest monster in my collection. It is a beautiful palette. It's stunning. The colors are beautiful. Everything in here works really well. This to me is so much like a collector's item because it just, I don't know, the storybook element really speaks to me. I do love the princesses and Sleeping Beauty specifically was like one of my favorite fairy tales growing up. So this has got to be the biggest palette in my collection. The next question is show your palette with the best memory. And I would have to go with my little Mac quad. This is a self-made quad. I bought this for my wedding. So when my husband and I got married, I decided I was going to do my own makeup for obvious reasons. So instead of paying someone to do my makeup, I spent the money that I would have spent on a makeup artist and I bought myself some new things specifically to wear on my wedding day because I wanted something 
that really felt special. So I went to the Mac store, I picked these colors out specifically, and every time that I wear these, I just think of my wedding day, and I, I just loved my makeup. I thought it looked so beautiful, and I felt, I felt like my very best self that day. So this is definitely, I'll never part with this even if I stopped using it, which I don't. I do use it quite often. Um, but this one's just really, really special. It has some great memories attached to it. So my little Mac quad. Okay, so the next question is, show a palette worth the hype? So I don't know if you guys remember when e.l.f. first started doing palettes in this format. This was the first one. So this is called Opposites Attract. This is in my Shop My Stash for the springtime. I'm due to do a summer version, but this has been in my Shop My Stash. This is the first palette that they did like this. They've done quite a few now. I know they've got like a Classics palette. They've got a blue and green palette. Um, they've got a few different ones in this format, but this was the first one that they did like this, and it really is worth the hype. The formula in these specific black palettes is very different than what you would have in in these ones that I was talking about earlier um, so this is definitely worth the hype it was sort of the beginning of a new generation of elf eyeshadows now they've got those little bite-sized eyeshadow palettes I'd love to get one of those and try it I haven't been able to get my hands on one but this was definitely worth the hype and I think there's a reason why they've sort of gone this way kind of going forward the next question is, show a palette not worth the hype. Now, I don't want you guys to take this the wrong way. I do love Tati, and I love this palette. Don't get me wrong. I did a whole dedicated video on it. I'll link that in the description box down below. However, I don't use it as much as I thought I would. This is what it looks like. It's very beautiful. It's a good, again, a good sort of everyday palette in terms of the color story. Um, easy to work with, all of that. I have nothing bad to say about the palette. However, I really got sucked into the hype with this one. I can remember bo booking my clients around the release of this palette. I was so excited. I was like hyperventilating ordering it. I was just beside myself. I'm a huge Tati fan. I've been a huge Tati fan for many, many years. Um, and I really got sucked into the hype. So did I need this as badly as I thought I did? No. There's nothing in this palette that I couldn't create with other palettes that I already own, but I just felt like I needed this. There was so much hype around it. It was so exciting. I knew it was gonna sell out and I just got sucked into that whole like FOMO thing. So even though I love this palette, I don't necessarily think that it was worth the hype that was surrounding it or that I had built up surrounding it. So this is a palette that wasn't really worth the hype. I hate to say it. Um, next question is show your favorite palette from a favorite brand. So one of my favorite brands is ColourPop. They do so many things so well. I love their eyeshadow formula. I love their uh, lippy sticks formula, the super shock shadows. They do so many things so well, but this uh, So Jaded palette is just amazing. This is everything. <laughs> It is one of my absolute favorite palettes. It's very large, but I there's so many different color stories going on in here that I don't feel like there's any wasted space. You know, sometimes you see big palettes and there's just a lot of repetition. You see that a lot with like Morphe palettes. There's a lot of repetition where you feel like you could have really condensed that down to like nine pans and had a very similar color story. With this, every color is just doing something special and you can do so many different combinations. Every single shadow formula in here works. I don't use the pressed glitters terribly often, but I do like having them in there because there's only two. I'm glad that there's not like a whole row of them like in the Tati palette. I don't use them enough for that to be like a dedicated row. Um, I love that they put a super shock shadow in here. I think that's the first time that they had done that. Now they're doing that quite a bit. I just love this. This again would be another palette that was like worth the hype. I love this so much. I use it all the time. It's just, they, they just did it so well. I love ColourPop. Good job, ColourPop. Killing it. And then the last question was, show your most used palette. And this one is going to be a repeat, but I think it's going to surprise you. <laughs> this stupid, tiny $10 e.l.f. Mad for Matte's eyeshadow palette. I was looking at my palettes and I was trying to determine which one do I reach for on a very consistent basis. And the answer is this one, <laughs> weirdly enough. As I said, I don't use 
like these five. I only use like the first five. Um, and the reason I use this one so much is because quite often when I'm working out of a palette, for example, this Boxy Charm palette, it's very colorful. There's not a ton of transition colors in there. Same with the Riviera palette. It's very colorful. Sometimes you don't want to do like a full rainbow look. Um, and I have some palettes that have all shimmers in them and no mattes. So this is sort of my go-to transition color palette, which is so weird. Again, it's so inexpensive. I didn't even buy it. It was given to me by somebody who didn't even like it. But I use it all the time. Like those five colors, these three here are great transition colors. You've got sort of a warm tone brown. You've got like a peachy color. You've got a cool tone brown. And then these two on the end, I use as like blending colors. If I have like a patchy bit, I'll just take a big fluffy brush in one of those light colors and just kind of go over what I've done. So even though I don't use this palette to create a complete look, it is the palette I reach for most often. It's so bizarre. So that's like a weird final answer, but that is my most used palette. And that's it. That's the palette tag. I thought it was really fun to sit down and actually think about my palettes sort of one by one, how I use them, how long I've had them, how much they're worth. Um, the hype surrounding them, all of that sort of thing. I really enjoyed watching these tags, so I really wanted to participate as well. As I said, I'll list in the description box down below some of my favorite YouTubers version of this tag, as well as the creators of the original tag, if you're interested in looking at those. I hope you guys liked this video. Please leave me some comments down below telling me some things about your palettes. Love to hear from you. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.